Hi everyone, this is Cooking with Kurt. Today, my husband Donald and I are going to show you how to make chicken pot pie. These are mini pies filled with chicken and veggies in a rich creamy sauce and then covered with a buttery flaky crust. Today, we're going to make six individual pies and this recipe can be halved or doubled as needed. This recipe was requested by me. I requested it. Chicken pot pie is one of my favorite savory dishes. I loved eating it as a kid. Uh, it's my ultimate comfort food and it always takes me back to my childhood. Aww, and now I love it too. We're going to start by making the dough for the pie crust. Take the bowl of your food processor. Add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour and three-fourths teaspoon of table salt. Pulse it a couple of times to mix the dry ingredients. Add in two sticks, which is 16 tablespoons, of very cold unsalted butter that's been cut into pieces. Pulse this till the pieces of butter are the size of small peas. In a small bowl, add in half a cup of very cold sour cream or Greek yogurt, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, and one third cup of very cold ice water. Whisk this together till smooth. Add this to the food processor and pulse till the mixture just comes together. Transfer this mixture into a large mixing bowl. Press the mixture into the bottom of the bowl with your hands until it forms a cohesive dough. Form the dough into a flat disc, wrap it in plastic wrap, and refrigerate for a minimum of one hour or up to two days. While the dough is cooling in the fridge, we're going to work on the chicken and vegetable filling. Take 3 to 3.5 pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts about six large fillets, and season both sides of each piece with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Take a large pot or a Dutch oven. This 26 centimeter Dutch oven can hold 5.5 quarts or 5.3 liters. Add in one tablespoon of vegetable oil and heat over medium high heat. When the oil is shimmering, brown the chicken pieces, five minutes on each side. This will probably require two batches of browning, depending on the size of your pot or Dutch oven. Once all the chicken pieces are browned, set them aside on a plate. In the same Dutch oven, still on medium-high heat, add another one tablespoon of vegetable oil. When the oil is hot, add in two medium yellow onions that have been diced, and two large leeks that have been sliced lengthwise, then cut into half-inch pieces and two teaspoons of fresh thyme. If fresh thyme is unavailable, you can substitute it with half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Saute this for eight to 10 minutes until the onions and leeks are softened and browned. Then add in one fourth cup of dry sherry, deglaze the Dutch oven and scrape up any brown bits at the bottom. Continue simmering for one minute until the liquid has mostly cooked off. If dry sherry is not available, you can use this common item in many Asian households, Shaoxing, also known as Hua Tiao, cooking rice wine, or a dry white wine like Chardonnay. And we're actually using Shaoxing cooking rice wine today because we actually had it in our pantry. <laughs> That's right, we use it for the Shopa Asado cooking video. Check out that episode in our channel. When the pan has been deglazed and the liquid has mostly cooked off, Add in three cups of low-sodium chicken broth, half a cup of heavy cream or milk, and two bay leaves. Mix this together till it's uniform and let it come to a simmer. Once it is simmering, add the browned chicken pieces together with any accumulated juices back into the pot. Turn the heat down to low and cover with a lid. Let it simmer on low heat for 30 minutes till the chicken is fully cooked and tender. While the chicken is simmering, take a medium bowl, add in three tablespoons of unsalted butter, and let the butter come to room temperature. After 30 minutes and the chicken is fully cooked, transfer the chicken onto a plate and set them aside to cool. Remove and discard the two bay leaves. Take the bowl with the room temperature butter and add in one third cup of all-purpose flour. Using a fork, cut the butter into the flour so that it makes a paste. 
ladle in two ladlefuls of liquid into the paste. Whisk together with a fork until the mixture becomes smooth. Repeat this with another two ladlefuls of liquid. Whisk together with a fork until smooth. Then repeat once more with two more ladlefuls of liquid. Whisk together with a fork till smooth. Then pour this mixture back into the Dutch oven and stir gently to combine. Let the mixture continue simmering on medium-low heat for 15 more minutes until it thickens into the consistency of gravy. If needed, add additional salt and pepper to taste. At this point, we also like to add one tablespoon of granulated sugar to balance out the flavor profile. Mix together till well combined. While the mixture is simmering for 15 minutes, dice the chicken breasts into half-inch cubes. When the sauce has thickened after 15 minutes of simmering, add in one and a half cups of diced carrots, about two medium carrots, and one and a half cups of frozen peas. Mix this together till it's uniform and let it simmer for three to five minutes to soften the carrots a bit. Turn off the heat. Add the chicken cubes back into the pot and one fourth cup of minced flat leaf parsley. Stir together till everything is well combined. Now we're ready to assemble our mini pies. Place an oven rack in the middle position and preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit in a small bowl. Add in one egg and beat it to use as an egg wash. Set it aside for now. Today we're using these 12 ounce ramekins for our individual chicken pot pies, link in the description section below, but you can use any oven safe containers. These ramekins would be great for making creme brulee, which might be a future episode. Let us know in the comment section below what other dishes we could make using these ramekins. Mm, I feel an ube creme brulee in our future. Mm. Distribute the chicken and vegetable filling equally between six oven safe containers. The filling divided into six should fill these 12 ounce ramekins. Each ramekin will contain about one and a half cups of pie. Place the six ramekins onto a sheet pan so they can be easily transported. The sheet pan will also help catch any stray flour, egg wash, etc. for easier cleanup. Take the chilled dough out of the fridge and divide into six equal pieces. I just eyeball them and take dough from one ball and add to another till they're all approximately the same size. Lightly flour a clean surface and roll each ball of dough into a circle that will cover the top surface of your ramekin with about one inch extra overhanging from the edges of the ramekin. Our ramekins have a 4.5 inch diameter, so I'm rolling out the dough into six and a half inch circles. Place the six rounds of dough over the six ramekins, gently pressing the dough into the ramekin so that it sticks to the outer rim of the ramekin. Try not to use too much flour when rolling out the dough, otherwise the dough will have trouble sticking to the ramekin. Cut a small X in the middle of the dough as a vent during baking. Then brush the six rounds of dough with the egg wash that was prepared earlier. We're going to bake these on the center rack in the preheated oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 to 50 minutes, or until the top pie crusts are golden brown. And there it is, individual sized chicken pot pies. A deliciously rich chicken and vegetable filling topped with a buttery flaky pie crust. And Mmm, yum. Mm. So good. I love the juicy cubes of chicken with a flaky pie crust. I feel like that scene in Ratatouille where I'm taking back to a warm and fuzzy memory from my childhood. <laughs> Amazing. That's my favorite movie. Well, mine too. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please let us know in the comment section below if you're planning to make this chicken pot pie. Send us pictures of your creations on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Links below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Cooking with Kurt. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when we post new cooking videos. And for our written recipes and more, check out cookingwithkurt.com. Maraming salamat! salamat.